A while back, I was having a conversation with Peter Ross, and of course we were talking about blacksmithing, and at some point he made a comment about how surprised he was at how few blacksmiths had ever forged a nut and a bolt. A nut and a bolt is really a relatively simple thing. It's basically a tenon on a short bar and a, a hole that's got a thread in it. So I thought we would actually look at making a nut and a bolt today. I've done it before, but I don't do it very often. Admittedly, buying off-the-rack hardware is faster, easier, more reliable, and we've talked about how to strip the plating off of that and blacken it so that it matches your project and looks good. But there may be times that you need something that simply isn't available, or you need it right now and you don't have time to run to town and go to the hardware store and hope they have that oddball size that you need. So making a nut and a bolt is a good skill builder. It's a good thing to have the experience of having done. So we're going to head over to the anvil, light the forge, and let's make a nut and a bolt. As I mentioned, a bolt is really nothing more than a tenon on a very short bar that is actually the head. So we're going to do that with a piece of three-quarter inch square bar. I've already got it in the fire. So we're going to bring it out and we're going to use the guillotine tool to create our tenon. And I'm going to go for a three-eighths bolt in this case. I'm going to step off about three-quarters of an inch here. Just depends on the length of bolt you want. Because if you go too deep, you end up creating a little nick that actually gets pulled into the bolt as you stretch the, the tenon part out. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm at about a half inch there, but I'm going for a 3 8 bolt size, so that's just about right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing this out by hand. Be careful not to mess up your nice clean shoulder you just created. going to start going to octagon a little bit early, a you know, square octagon round, because I'm going to go to a spring die under the power hammer. You can use whatever kind of die you want to get this into as close a perfect round as you possibly can. So we're just going to go into the power hammer with a spring die. You can do this with any other anvil type die. And it's a two-position die. The first one's a little larger, and we'll refine it under the, the second position. So there's our tenon that will become the threaded portion of the bolt and I'm going to use a heading tool pretty soon so I want to make sure it fits through the 3 8 hole in the heading tool which it does very nicely. So the next thing to do is cut it off so that it's actually a bolt and not a tenon. To do that I'm going to use these cutoff dies on the Smith and Magician. They've got a stop on there, they won't go too far and one of the reasons I'm going to do this is because they're fairly clean and efficient whereas cutting it off on a hardy might mess up your uh, tenon that's going to be the threaded section. You could hacksaw this off. And these will cut a fairly straight side on one side and it leaves kind of a, a pointy side on the other. I'm actually going to put the pointy side so that when I've cut my bolt off I end up with a pyramid head bolt of sorts. I want those the other way. And that way my cutters will help create the pyramid head bolt. So I'm going to put about a half inch of straight bar through there for the, the head that will get the wrench. I'm going to cut part way through and rotate 90 degrees. And work my way around the bar. And with any luck, I end up with a nice pyramid head on my bolt. I'm going to have to straighten the bolt. Even doing that I managed to 
get it a little crooked. Now a heading plate is sort of like a monkey tool used for things like bolts, nails, and rivets. I'm just going to forge this down and I'm going to hammer blows on my pyramid head, not all straight down. This helps create a nice shoulder and should result in a very symmetrical bolt. I'm very happy with that. I think I'm going to do just a little bit more to it though. I'm going to put some tiny decorative marks in there, very small. I'm going to go back into the heading plate. I'm just going to take a cold chisel, or a, a hot chisel I should say, and just nick the flats on the pyramid head just a little bit, just for a decorative line. And this is something I first saw on some bolts somebody sent me to make copies of. They were for a church door and they held the hardware on the church door and they had lost some when they were rebuilding the door. So they needed somebody to make some new ones. So there's a, a little decorative element on our bolt. Next I'll do a little bit of straightening on it and then the bolt is done except for threads. So this is just a matter of bending it a little bit to straighten it where it needs it. You might be able to do this just by locking it in a vise. But your life will be easier if you take the time to, to get this straight now. And try not to mess up your head doing it. Or your bolt head. Either one. So that could be a decorative rivet if you were making decorative rivets. But if you put threads on it, it's a bolt. So now we need to make a nut. So I'm using half by three quarter inch flat bar. I'm going to punch a hole, undersized hole. Because when you thread this, you're going to be cutting threads to the right diameter. If you start with the right diameter, you got nothing to cut threads in. So there is what I hope is an undersized hole. Let me get a, a drift and test it. I have a 3 8 drift here and it doesn't go in. So I know that's too small. I may have to compare it with a drill bit that's the right size and I might go ahead and drill it out. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this to size and then refine the shape a little bit because a nut should just be square, it shouldn't have that bulge in it. I'm going to cut this off in the guillotine tool. Same to cutting dies, but I've got them turned around this time so that we end up with a nice square shoulder on there instead of a A beveled cut. I don't need a pyramid nut. So there's our nut. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drift this with a 3 8 drift and work it down to uh, back into a square shape. I don't like the little bulge on the side. And you could file that down. But I'm going to work it a little bit after I drift it to guarantee that it's a little undersized because that will reduce the hole. I'm going to drift this through the same 3 8 hole in the heading plate so it doesn't deform. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit at the anvil. But it's still going to be to bulge out just a little bit as I finish drifting. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to refine the edges of this just a bit and make sure it's 
not bulged out in the middle, and that should shrink my hole up enough that I can get a good, good cut job on the, the threads. I just want to bring the sides and the ends back to square. This one's actually a little rectangular, so we might do a little filing on that. But that will shrink that hole up just a little bit. And guarantee we have something we can cut threads into. It'll be a little bit of a lopsided nut. There we go. So there's the nut that goes with the bolt. We'll let that cool. And the bolt is all, probably almost cool. Now how about we make a washer? I'm just going to take a piece of eighth by one material here. We'll make a square washer to go with our square headed nut and bolt. I'm going to punch over the bolster to guarantee that it doesn't buckle down into my pritchel hole. And of course, a good way to get it stuck. But I'll probably go over the pritchel hole to enlarge that a little bit. But there's a hole. There's the slug that didn't quite fall out. The question has been asked a few times in the past about drifting with your punch. Why isn't a punch and a drift the same tools? And in some case, they are. In this case, there's no reason I can't drift with this punch. It's a tapered punch. I want my hole bigger. I can keep working this punch in until the hole is the size I want. Why would I not want to do that with, say, the nut that we used a separate drift on? Well, again, this is a tapered punch the further I drive it in the hole, the larger one side of the nut is going to get, and therefore by the time it's through the far side, I will have lost the ability to cut threads on the fat side. So a parallel sided drift that's exactly what I want is a far better choice than using a tapered punch as a drift. And we'll talk about some of that stuff in another video, but just real briefly, in some cases, the punch is the drift. Just not in every case. So I'm going to put that back in the hole. Because I'm going bigger than my heading plate, I have to go over some other hole here. And this just needs to be big enough. And you notice I'm moving around in circles. So I'm supporting it in a different place each time. But this only needs to be big enough to get a bolt through easily. bolt doesn't quite fit, so we're going to want to do that again. And of course you could drill this to make a washer, but we're talking about blacksmithing, not machining. Not that there's really anything wrong with drilling. Drilling is a legitimate technique for blacksmith work. Like so many things, at one point drills would have been made by blacksmiths. They just would have been slower and less efficient so using a drill to clean out that nut and make it exact is one thing. Using it for this is uh, another matter if you're using handmade drills. So let's cut the washer off. Again, I'm going to use the guillotine tool. And I'm going to try to cut that as square and symmetrical as I can. And I'll do a little bit of filing on the edge because that does still leaves a little bit of a sharp rag. But other than that, that will serve every purpose a washer needs to serve. So we have a nut, a bolt, and a washer. But the nut and the bolt will still need to have threads cut in them to be useful. At this stage, the first thing I would do is make sure you're really ready to cut threads. And I will take a drill guide that's got nice precise holes. This is a cheap plastic guide, but it works just fine. And make sure it goes through the 3 8 hole, and make sure it doesn't go through the one slightly smaller. So I'm in good shape. If it doesn't quite go, I would file this very carefully round to get it in shape. And I am going to file the very top of it, because it's cut off kind of ragged from the end of the bar. 
and I think we'll have a much better looking bolt if we go ahead and make it clean. Plus we can put a little bevel on it to make the die start easier. So that takes care of the bolt. We've forged it to exact size. It's nice and clean because we used a good die to do it in. So a top and bottom swedge is really the ideal for this. But we should make sure that the nut is also suitable to be threaded. Now how do we know what size that really is? I, I know I forged that down a little bit and that was sort of intentional because I want to make sure I've got the exact size for my cut threads. So let's take a look and see how to figure that out. There are reference charts available that will tell you exactly what drill to drill. Now if you buy a new tap that comes in its own package, frequently it'll say on the package, but all my taps are out of packages at this point, so I, I rely on the charts to tell. And that this one is just a little metal gauge that can hang on the wall. I keep it in a box with my full set of drill bits that has letter, number, and fractional size bits so I could have all the options for drilling. And I look up, I want a 3 8 coarse thread. That's 3 8 diameter, 16 threads per inch. And it tells me I want to drill a 5 16 hole. So I'm going to put a 5 16 drill bit through this hole to make sure I've got it right. Now because we punched this hole we could actually use a brace and bit because all we're doing is reaming it or a hand crank bit drill if you don't have an electric drill. And we could do this under the drill press quickly and easily. So I just take out that little bit extra that's in there. Guarantee that I'm going to be able to cut threads in that. And let's go ahead and start with this. And I'll find a 3 8 by 16 tap. It's a good idea to use a little bit of light oil on your, your tap. Now if you're not familiar with taps and dies, you usually buy these in sets, but you can buy them individually. Taps cut the female hole in a nut, and dies cut the male threads on a bolt or a screw. You want to go slow, and once it starts to cut, back up every now and then to help break the chips off. Not a big risk in a 3 8 hole, but little tiny taps are really very easy to break. So once that goes through cleanly, we're done with that. And make sure you support it because sometimes it comes loose from the handle and you don't want to drop this on the floor. They're very delicate. So we have nice clean threads on the inside of our, our nut now. A few little rags from cutting it off. I think I'm going to do just a little bit of filing on this. Okay, that's way better. Nobody wants to cut themselves on that. As long as I'm doing some filing, let's go ahead and do this square washer and get rid of this sharp part where we cut it off. Now I know filing is screechy and it's painful on the ears and you probably want to wear hearing protection when you file. 
So I'm trying to take my little clip-on microphone off while I file and go stick it inside a glove on the bench behind me and I hope that is muffling it enough that I'm not causing anybody too painful an experience to watch me file. Again a little bit of oil for the die so the die cuts the outside threads. And just like with the tap every so often give it a little bit of a spin backwards to break the chips. Do you have to cut all the way down? No. If this bolt's only going to stick out a little bit, if it's about a two inch bolt, so if it's going through an inch and a half of material, you only need a half inch of threads. So that's probably all the threads I need for whatever this bolt may someday end up doing. And again, I don't want to drop this on the floor. I kind of support it that way. So clean all the little chips off. And there's some cut threads. We have a square washer. Make two washers if you need two washers. And we have a nut that goes on there. Now the nut and the bolt head are not the same size. and That's not out of character for handmade stuff but you could certainly file the nut down or try to make it out of a smaller piece. It just gets a lot harder to punch that hole if you're making it in a really small piece. Completely functional, ornamental, adds a real touch of class to your work because it's all handmade. So there we have a 3 8 by 2 inch long bolt with nut and washer threaded at 16 threads per inch. All done in the blacksmith shop. Now I don't really expect you to make nuts, bolts, and washers for all your projects that need them unless you're really doing high-end work and the custom-made hardware matters. But there are some projects where that is very appropriate. Mostly it is a matter of developing skills and being able to say that you have the skills to make a nut, bolt, and washer and yes you've done it and know how to do it if you need to. It's just something we as blacksmiths ought to have in our repertoire, so to speak. So I hope that was something that you found enjoyable, something you might be able to use and put to work in your shop. It does require that you have at least one tap, one die, a die stock, and a tap wrench, and that's a bit expensive if you're only making one bolt. But at some point that's stuff you'll want in your shop, and we will talk about tap and die sets and the accessory tools that go along with it, and why you need that 120 piece set of drill bits with all the letters and the numbers because every tap drill or yeah every tap drill is a different size and you get into those oddball drill bits that you never use any other time but it is important for cutting, getting the threads to work just right to drill the right size hole so we'll talk about all that in another video and hopefully we can have something that's worth worth sharing it might get a little dry and boring talking about thread sizes, but we'll see. As always, I hope that you can get out to your shop, hope you can make something, whether it's this project or some other project. If you've got a comment, you want to share something or some observations about the video or just ask a question, feel free to do so down in the comment section. Give it a thumbs up if you can. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a couple of other videos, but really, get out to the shop eventually. It's where you're really going to learn blacksmithing. So stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you later.